This time on Slickworks, I'm gonna be doing a full restoration on a vintage barber chair. And this is what I have to work with. Okay, so I have dozens of pieces, some vintage hardware, and a random spring in there. I don't know what that's for, but see if we can figure it out. So I got the base over there. That's the base of the seat. Yeah, we got all the wood pieces here for reupholstery. This old chair filled with burlap sack. <laughs> uh, Footrest, armrest, headrest. This wood is obviously going to be replaced with a nice shiny chunk of quarter inch stainless, I'm sure. So I got this, uh, just was playing around with the, with the seat base and it, it does function. It does go up, as you can see. Not as quick as it should, but it does go up and then go all the way over to that side and it comes down. Smooth, so it still works. Nice to see all this works, but of course it does. It was made in the 20s, so stuff was actually built to last. I mean, look, look at how solid this is. Like, yeah, even the size of that cylinder in there. But anyways, I gotta start piecing this thing together. Hopefully I have all the parts. Um, yeah, just gotta start figuring it out, I guess. And here it is, all assembled and together, and it even functions, which is awesome. I'll show you guys how that functions in a sec. So it was relatively easy to figure it out. Um, it all just kind of bolted together. I think the trickiest part was the seat, because under the seat there's this bracket, so like the, the seat bottom actually reclines as, as the legs come out and stuff. So this folds up like that, if you want to rest your feet on there. Yeah, pretty pretty cool. Uh, definitely definitely a rare project. I, this is probably the only one I'm gonna see in my lifetime uh, coming through the Slickworks doors here. He he wants it uh, more of like a, a traditional restoration. It's not getting metal flake or like a Sweeney Todd airbrusher or anything like that. I gotta take a ton of photos now and strip this thing apart. Send off the stuff for reupholstery. Uh, this piece I got to build a new chunk of wood because it's all rotten these these bolts don't even do anything uh, So yeah, but yeah got my work cut out for me. I'll show you guys how it works Pretty cool. Time to strip the whole thing down again. And tonight I'm gonna start polishing, I think this, this nickel plated stuff. I think it's nickel plated. That's how they did it back then, right? Not chrome. Yeah, well, should come up nice. We'll see. I told the owner of this chair that I'm gonna try and save some time and money and polish it instead of waiting in line with everybody else to get stuff replated at the one plating place in this province. So, this is what I managed to get done. No, I'm just kidding. So that's the before, and this is the, that is the after. So that will do, we will not have to be giving the plating guys a call, that's for sure. Now I got a whole lot of stainless, or nickel, or chrome, whatever it is. I got a whole lot of polishing to do, so I'm gonna put the camera down and show you guys what it looks like when it's all polished up.
Okay, so here's something I wanted to show you guys. So for all the pieces that I've been working on, I've taken a razor blade and just lightly scratched off any old paint like this. Why am I using a razor blade when any paint that's gonna come off like this will probably come off with compressed air? Why that is, is because if I use compressed air and I can blow it off, of course. If I use compressed air and I hit it and there's even the tiniest little crack in nickel, as you're blowing off trying to get rid of loose paint, it'll just flick and then you'll have a big patch where there's bare nickel, a patch that won't polish back, a patch that will forever be brown. Creating more patina, it already has enough patina, we're gonna save as much of this nickel plating as we can. So razor blade first, and then afterwards I hit it with a steel wool, and then polish gives you the best chances of saving the plating that's on here. But now look at all those scratches, it's ruined. Actually, it's not. Let me show you, hang on a sec. Glass cleaner on steel wool. Mother's metal polish. A coarse pad that started out looking like this. Give it a wipe. Swirl remover. Yes, it works on metal too. As we move over, that is what we're left with. Beautiful. Okay, well I got this stuff ready for paint stripper. I'm also gonna strip this, cause somebody painted this base, but I got a sneaky suspicion here that it's probably nickel plated on the bottom, even if it isn't. I wanna get this paint off and just, just see how it looks, uh, cause this is gonna be a lot of sanding. So the reason why I'm gonna paint strip it before I start sanding is because if it is beautiful shiny nickel that's been protected by this paint over all these years, then we're gonna wanna see how much of that we can polish back. And even if we got a paint around the outside, because the majority of the wear is gonna be right on the edge, right? Or the majority of the nickel that's worn off. So even if we just paint like a ring around the outside like this, and then even mask off a ring on the inside going up, like that would be best. We wanna keep as much of the original shininess going on as we can, of course. So degreasing the base of this barber's chair has proved to be a bit more of a difficult experience than I thought it would be. I mean, when restoring like a 1920s tractor or a 1930s tractor, you expect there to be a hundred years of grease on it. A barber's chair? I don't know. I just wasn't expecting this, this much nastiness on it. So this is gonna take a whole lot of uh, fire pit gas which is basically just old gas that won't run in the go-kart or the weed whacker or the lawnmower anymore, so. But yeah, oh, also something interesting. Look at this. You know what this is? This is old hair and I'm finding this all over this barber's chair. So this hair is probably from someone who is long since deceased. <laughs> <laughs> kind of interesting, but yeah. Anyways, degreasing this. Oh my goodness, this is hours and hours of work. But we're getting it done, because this thing is gonna be so cool. Well, as you can see, this is pretty well all cleaned off, all the grease is gone. It's not gonna be painted, so I'm not going crazy with it. But a whole new element of design appeared before my eyes while I was doing that. Have a look at this. Do you recognize that? Wood grain. So I gotta be very careful when I strip this. I might actually have to sand this out. So I'm gonna wash all the oil off it and take it over to the bench and do a little sanding. 
just to double check. And then that brings on a whole new element to this restoration. Well, as exciting as it is, along with the new discovery that this part is actually wood, who would have known? I have to strip the stuff that I'm polishing. This is the final pieces in the polish agenda. So we're gonna see how much nickel we can save here. I got my aircraft paint stripper. This can is probably about 15 years old, I would guess, but we'll see if it'll do the job. So I'm gonna paint it on here. It'll sizzle like bacon for a little bit. I should be able to wipe it off with a, uh, a paper towel and neutralize it. And then hopefully we're left with some beautiful nickel plating that we'll be able to polish back and rejuvenate that shine from, oh, 100 years ago. Yeah. base is finished and ready for stain which brings us to exhibit B here so I gotta sand out all this stuff all these wood pieces this one looks like it is fully saturated with some sort of oil so this is gonna take quite a bit some kind of 1890s barber oil but yeah check this out so this is a footrest here I don't know if I showed you guys this we got one layer we got two layer we got some Horse hair, that or, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna say it, I might get demonetized. Okay, so there's some horse hair and then underneath, there's a whole bunch of beautiful hay. And then under that, we can see the contour of the wood. So I'm gonna rip this part. I'm not gonna finish this wood, refinish this wood because I have to make a whole new piece because as you can see on the ends, it is very rotten and screws don't even hold into there. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. Buzz through all this stuff and you'll see how all this looks when it's done being buzzed through. So yeah, um, I'll just go like this. Well, here we are and these pieces, a lot of these are not sanding out anywhere near as well as I thought they would like this right here. I'm get, I guess that's the top, but look at that, it looks greasy. Must be full of mustache wax or something. Anyways, I'm gonna keep working. So now it's time on this barber chair to paint the stuff that needs to be painted, the stuff where the nickel plating absolutely could not have been saved. So this is what I have to work with. This is all the stuff that's gonna be getting painted besides, of course, the base of the chair over there, a nice little ring around the outside. So as you can see, a lot of this nickel plating is just flaking off. So I'm gonna be using my three inch roll lock disc and that should pull off the nickel plating without damaging the metal underneath too badly. And then this stuff, in a short while should be ready for a primer. And here is what we're left with. So all these pieces that you saw were all nasty and flaky are now sitting in virgin steel. So these are all ready for some etch prime action. And then once that, I'm just gonna go wet on wet, etch prime, and then while it's still got a bit of a tack to it, I'm just gonna hit it with a high build and sand it out. I'm not gonna go and fix all, fix all these uh, casting flaws that are in here um, because the owner said he didn't wanna make this a $10,000 barber's chair. And with finding new wood and whatnot, the price is kinda creeping up, so I'm gonna do what I can to save him a bit of coin that way. So yeah, this stuff's ready for primer. I'm gonna start staining some wood.
Well, here is a first for me. First time using a water-based polyurethane. You're not supposed to thin it out. You're not supposed to even stir it. It says fast drying, but you have to wait an hour between coats and it takes three days to cure. So, wait one hour between coats. I'm on my second coat now. So now I have to wait another hour. I can't believe that they can claim it's fast drying right at the top of the can. Fast drying water-based polyurethane for this, uh, this clear coat. I've never had to wait that long personally, but I mean, it's gonna take three coats to get this thing done. Am I gonna bill out for three hours time? No, I'm probably gonna bill out for about 15 minutes. <laughs> so I'm just like hanging out in the shop and 15 minutes will include like cleaning up the brush and stuff like that. But here we are. Anyways, customer's not gonna pay for three hours plus cleanup time uh, for this. It's gonna be like 15 minutes and, and that's it because I'm not a piece of garbage. chair base and all the barber chair parts are primed and out of the booth and ready to be sanded down in 400. Okay so I'm on to the final piece of wood that needs refinishing and also will have to be reupholstered obviously. So let's see how they how they stuffed a, a backrest back 120 years ago. We got our first layer here is the cloth which is obviously disintegrating with a layer of something or other a whole bunch of uh, probably horse hair this feels uh feels kind of wiry probably horse hair i'm gonna put a mask on just to be safe i mean it's probably horse hair but it feels Feels crunchy, feels kind of crusty. So I don't fully trust it. So probably have my mask on anyways, as it is 120 years old. And who knows what kind of diseases were going around back then. Okay, so just cut into the side and have a look at what's forming this shape here. Oh, shit. okay, that's repairable. Man, this is really on there. Okay. Now she's coming free. Oh, look at that, there's a couple springs. Two springs. Just two. All right, well. Okay, well, there's a whole lot of nails that I'm gonna have to really delicately pull out of this thing if I can, or delicately tap them in. But the upholstery place is gonna need to not have a whole bunch of nails in the way when they tack in the new upholstery. Um, yeah, so this is gonna take some figuring out, but uh, I'll figure it out. Well, all the nails are out of this. Just gotta glue this guy back on there. Um, it's funny, so this is the back of the headrest right here. So the headrest sits here. This is the back of the, the backrest. 
that's how it sits. And of course, down at the very bottom down here, we have, ooh, somebody's grandpa or great grandpa or great great grandpa's hair. Tons of it. Tons of human hair. Lovely. Oh, the things you find in a in an ancient barber's chair. Also this. I wanted to point out, these are all the nails, well, some of the nails. These are all the nails that my magnet picked up, but these here, these are not recycled steel. Like this is straight from the mine, off to the foundry, hammered through the nail press or whatever it is, and, and out to the world. Shipped via steam train or horse and buggy, horse and carriage. So neat. This is the headrest. I'm just starting to strip it now. Obviously, this wood piece is not gonna make it. There is, uh, oh, where is it here? <clears throat> so this is the other part of the wood piece. It's like a ratchet mechanism um, to make the headrest go up and down. We are not gonna do this. For me to restore this, uh, okay, well, let me show you. So all this stuff is primed. This piece works together with this piece that goes on the back of the headrest, which just happens to be broken in half. But again, we're not gonna restore it. So this is supposed to slide down like that, and that's how you that's how you set the, the height of the headrest, and, and that's your, your release there. This is the channel here that this piece is supposed to run in up and down like that, right? So this is the piece that allows the headrest to go up and down. And I actually found this other half in uh, one of my buckets there. So I panel bonded them together, but from this line down, this entire section was completely broken off. So this is actually all panel bond. So this whole section is panel bond. I just kind of stuck some panel bond on a piece of tape and, and then just kind of shaped it, sculpted it into the shape that it is now. So it's ready for a reprime and we have a complete fixed piece. That's awesome. Well, that's what I call a great success right there. Like fully functioning, pulls up, push the button. I just kind of figured out that a spray should go there. Still a little sticky on the way down. A little bit of candle wax in there. Should help that out. But yeah, look at that. Very good. Very cool. I'm sure he'll be excited about that. Anyways, time to blow it all apart and get some primer on there. Okay, so all the other pieces are stained and I gotta redo the clear on this because I wouldn't recommend anybody use water-based polyurethane, whatever it is, ever. This has been here for two weeks and you can see I just run my fingernail across it and it just scratches. So we're gonna go ahead with the solvent-based clear coat that I use on everything. This was a failed project, so I'm gonna have to write off a couple hours on the old invoice for them, but that's no problem. We'll get this done right. All right, so every piece is hung up in the booth now and ready for some clear coat. Just giving it all a good blow off. Uh, all I have to do is wipe it down with a little uh, tack rag and then we're good to go. I was gonna film in here, but this stuff is too close to the 
tripod and my camera is gonna just totally get covered in clear coat. So I'll show you guys how it looks after it's all cleared. Well, after one coat of clear, this stuff's already looking so much better. But after three, maybe even four coats of clear, this stuff is gonna look real nice. Okay, well this piece was all done and then Gordon pointed something out that it doesn't sit flush and yeah, I don't know how I didn't notice that, but I cut out these little sections here and now it sits perfectly, perfectly flush. And then that's where we had, there's a quarter inch, now we're down to like an eighth inch there. But it's totally flush on the bottom and everything fits as it should. So that is true to the width that it needs to be now. All good. Now it's time for painting the pieces that are getting painted. I've got everything hung up all here and as well as the, the seat base of course is going all black. So yeah. It is finally assembly time on this barber's chair. I am very excited about that. Got all the upholstered stuff back from Anthony's upholstery. Let your eyeballs feast on this. Oh my goodness gracious me. Absolutely gorgeous. Exactly what we were looking for. It's called a uh, bun tufting. You got the beautiful stitching in here as well as of course, all the nails around the outside. Just beautiful work. See the armrest here, equally just beautiful work. He actually left me a bunch of nails too because uh, I do actually have to finish the upholstery on the back of the seat myself once I install everything, put it all together, but just fantastic work. Uh, absolutely, incredibly impressed. So check out Anthony's upholstery on Instagram. I've got some assembling to do. So far, absolutely gorgeous, but I have to hit the pause button right now over 
one screw, one piece of hardware. I only got one because if you remember, remember how I remade this piece and how half of it is actually plastic, but you would never know. Well, anyways, uh, there was only half of that screwed in by uh, whoever owned this previously, um, only had half of it. So I need to find a screw that looks like this. I don't know why, well, I mean, I'm probably not going to with a flathead slot, but something that'll work with that fat of a thread. And then, uh, yeah, so here, um, Joel left this bit for me open because he wasn't sure how this goes, but that piece actually has to go underneath here. So I gotta cut it down like that and across and then cut it back up and then I'll be hammering in all the, uh, the nails there. So yeah, this piece is installed, of course. Just had to take my pick tool and find where the screw hole was. And yeah, so that's all installed and ready to work. And yeah, just that piece there, just find find where it sits and cut it out, do the nail work, and that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Well, of course, because I needed one screw, I had to buy a hundred. And here it is, all finished. Got that beautiful wood grain back. All the nickels all polished up. Upholstery work, just gorgeous. Functioning headrest, of course. Yep. Very, 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 very sweet. He's gonna love it. I cannot wait for this reveal. And that is a wrap on the barber chair video, except the reveal is coming up soon, so you don't wanna miss that. I gotta say, like, it's not very often. This is probably the only 100 plus year old barber chair that I'll ever have in my shop here at Slickworks. It's kinda neat. People are getting haircuts after tethering their horses outside the barber shop. This is from a time of, like, you know, Oregon Trail, horse drawn carriages. Cactuses, tumbleweeds rolling by, you know, Western saloons, howdy partner sort of thing. Like this is, it's history and it's, it's really neat. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 95% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. Subscribe. have it another customer absolutely thrilled he's going off to show his parents right now he actually said his mom might cry it is a family heirloom i'm so happy to have done this job for him and it turned out great thanks for watching guys like and subscribe if you haven't already i would appreciate that peace